It's two or er, Thursday, Wednesday. <laughs> I'm the fuck. I don't remember anymore. Uh, folks, welcome aboard. It's Thursday night. You know what that means? It's cacophony. Our urban adventures take the helm, uh, as you can clearly see here. Uh, tonight's adventure, not really an adventure. Uh, going to be something a little bit different that I've uh, dreamt up, concocted, or crapped through. We'll see how it works. It is entitled Olympiad. For obvious reasons, soon to become to light. Follow us on Twitch. <laughs> follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy cool stuff like a shirt or a, I don't know, duvet cover or shower curtain, uh, check us out. The link's there. If you want to shoot the shit about D and D, find us at our Discord channel. Most importantly, this month, one shots all weekends, uh, and none of them are by me. So if you don't like me, that's right. Nobody. Uh, <laughs> if you don't like me, you can uh, play a one shot. Uh, <laughs> M Hobo Inc. at uh, Twitter or at Gmail. Hit us up. Let us know. Kyle's running a five E sixth level Christmas based this Saturday. Uh, I have intimate knowledge of it. Uh, should be pretty good, even though Kyle's running it. <laughs> uh, see, that's why I said it. <laughs> uh, uh, are you turned up? I mean, I can hear you fine. <laughs> there you go. Uh, also, thanks, Pirate Dog Dice, for dice that did not sadly kill any of those bitches. Uh, and of course, oddfishgames.com. Oddfishgames.com. If your game stinks, swing by their adventure sense. I got Kyle Putrid Sewers, and he's going to get that as soon as I get off my dead ass and deliver it to him. Uh, also, how to RPG with your cat is this Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's free to play, but you got to sign up. Check out our Twitter page for that. Sign up. Have a good time. It's, uh, it's about an hour. So, you know, you guys can enjoy it. Plus, Steelers don't play till Monday. So, you know, yeah, there's nobody playing. Who gives a shit? <laughs> uh, before, we, before we go into the intro uh, and has our producer screaming at the dog some more, let's introduce you to the people who are playing tonight. Uh, we're going to start with David this time because David always gets hooked on this one. So, David, who, yeah, are, I do. You, who are you playing? Hi, I'm David. I'll be playing Zadar tonight. He is our arcane trickster, changeling. He's... Yeah, he's the whole bag of tricks. So uh, anyway, that's me. I'm usually here Thursday nights on Cacophony and uh, most times on Between the Rolls, except for this past Tuesday. It was a special one. So uh, if you missed it, you need to watch it. So it was very entertaining. So. It was a shit show, just like the campaign. Which it was awesome. Three, three, two. 43 too many episodes. Uh, next up is now uh, iPhone. Uh -oh. <laughs> iPhone, tell us who you are and who are you playing. Timing is everything, young one. Uh, I know. Nice. Not having internet. Um, I'm Caitlin. I'm playing that. <laughs> I know my name, I swear. I'm One of those nights, you. folks. <laughs> I just, I only poured it. I have not drank from it yet. And I would see fling paladin because see flings always roll. Sorry. I thought you told her to open the red. It's the rosé that we're finishing up first. And then, then the red. The red. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> one thing we did not cover with Zadar, who are you tonight? Uh tonight, that is a good question. I had <laughs> I had one in mind. I'll let you know in a minute. <laughs> Fair enough. Last but certainly not least, our producer and player this evening, Carrie. Carrie, uh, who are you and who are you playing? <laughs> mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, these guys are sixth level. Uh, but sadly, Wait, we are now? yeah, you were six level. You were supposed time. to <laughs> level up. <laughs> Come on, there, Chris. Make sure you got enough friggin' hit points. No wonder I nearly killed you last game. Are you Canadian? 
<laughs> Did you celebrate Thanksgiving last month? Or a month before? Uh, folks, oh uh, the title of this one is Olympiad. Uh, the trade conference has wrapped up in cacophony. It has been almost a month long uh, ordeal with these guys having to pool. Uh, pull guard duty uh, as the, most of the guards were stuck guarding the envoys who were troublesome to say the least. That all ends tonight as the trade conference is over finito end of the line, just like the campaign. Uh, however, uh, you guys not having to pull guard duty means you get to relax at home until a knock on the door is heard. It's always a knock on the door. <laughs> who wants to answer it? Okay, Ernie, who else wants to not answer? <laughs> I'll answer it. There you go. The tiefling <laughs> goes to answer it. Uh, and you discover that it is Councilman Famunda D's Nuts, former head of the Adventurers Guild, and nice. three, count them, three members of the city council. Uh, they ask if they may have a word with you guys. One word? How many words? 22. All right. All right. We can count them down. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're counting. <laughs> yeah, I, I might be bad at math. Uh, with four fifths of the council present, you fear the worst and bid them welcome to your humble bungalow. Gathering chairs and offering them drinks, you are curious as to why they have come to your home. Favanda thanks you profusely and apologizes for disturbing you at home each of the council members also extend their thanks to the service to the city which you have so graciously rendered free of charge i.e helping out the guards uh Fumunda finally stops the praise train and clears his throat and gets to the point of the thing uh as you well know the trade conference is over most of the delegates will be sailing back to their respective lands in the morning however they have come up with a good idea um uh, i'm sorry they will be traveling back in two days um they have come up with an idea to promote brotherhood and cooperation between the seven divisions uh, that have been hashing out trade agreements. They have proposed a series of competitive games with each side having three participants. We on the council feel that you three offer the best option to promote the fine qualities of the city of Cacophony, and we would ask you to go ahead and join the games in the name of cacophony i told you it was a weird idea i'm honored <laughs> that's two all right yes okay uh they present you with black silk tabards uh that goes over you just like the guards wear only this one has a golden canard emblem on it uh nice. you guys uh have made them feel honored that you would go ahead and participate the council is going to offer you a home of your own aside from this bungalow if you win the overall contest or 500 gold pieces each. It'll be up to you. Uh, they are just tickled pink that you would go ahead and do this. Uh, Fomunda explains that there are six competitions and each centers around core attributes, strength, dex, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has been agreed to by all members of the trading coalition. Uh, the PCs will be asked to pick the two attributes you wish to compete in. No one can compete in any more than two. Uh, so now it comes thinking time as to who's going to participate in which section. Uh, after you pick that and compete those legs, uh, a grand champion will be chosen in the form of a team. So even if you fail to win glory of an individual competition, that does not necessarily mean that you will not still bring fame or fortune to cacophony. After all, these are friendly games. Uh, there will be most likely no deaths. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> I make no promises. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Fomunda says that he will have Hortense come pick you up in the morning and lead you to the starting area. Now I ask you guys 
pick your attributes that you think you'll do best in. And that's all I can say about that. I won't say what the competitions are. Okay. Um, so talk amongst yourselves. Wait, right. what are the attributes? Strength, uh, dexterity, constitution, oh, okay. wisdom, intelligence, and charisma. Charisma. Uh, I'll take. Oh, you got to compete two. <laughs> yep, I'll take dex and charisma. Charisma. I have no constitution. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but you're you're strong, so you can take strength. Yeah, I can do strength. Or or we or is it the the main skill sets? Oh, main? like acrobatic and like inte- intelligence. Uh, it is the main skill sets. Yeah. Well, you're a you're a necromancer. Intelligence. That'd be one. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Neil is intelligence. Ah. Uh, Tiefling and Camille. I got strength, constitution, and wisdom. I'll take open. wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> well, gonna... I did like strength and charisma are technically my highest ones. But... Oh man, my I got con a feeling is like zero. <laughs> I imagine con is going to be like uh, fear factor or whatever, like a combination food fear factor where you got to eat the weird stuff or something. So the lineup is such strength, Daphne, dexterity, Zadar, constitution, Camille, intelligence, Camille, wisdom, Daphne, charisma, Zadar. Is that your final answer? Yes. Okay. Uh, you guys go to bed. Uh, everybody give me a D20 roll. Let's see how you sleep. Terrible, probably. Like real life. <laughs> Nat uh, 20. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, 13. Uh, Zadar, you sleep okay. Daphne might be dead. And Camille sleeps fitfully <laughs> as she is concerned about her performance tomorrow. <laughs> uh, the morning breaks and... There is another knock on the door. Uh, somebody kicked Daphne in the head to wake her up, and somebody answered the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get up. I'll do the foot nudge. <laughs> so. uh, let's take a real quick pause. Okay. okay. <laughs> so you all ready for your feat of strength, Daphne? Yeah. yeah. I don't know how I set up my person. I did a little chaotic. I like things to be weirdly like pretty balanced, and I don't like having a true negative. So mm-hmm. I'll always try to avoid negative ones. Yeah. So I'm like, man, I should have just took like a bad one to have some good stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're. Because I do the like point by thing because I, mm-hmm. I don't know, instead of rolling, and I'm like, oh, yeah. it's gives me more anxiety. <laughs> but then on my saving throws, for some reason, whatever I did, my wisdom and charisma, it's like plus six for wisdom and plus seven for charisma and saving. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just got to save myself when I'm talking, I guess. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> And then for like the skills, I did intimidation and investigation as some of my high ones and religion because paladin, then gotcha. athletics. Yeah. So those are all like plus fives. Cool. Hey. Yeah, being a changeling, like my deception is like plus 10. <laughs> yeah, you have to. 
can't believe I fought at a level five last week. Oh, yeah. It was a rough one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like so much. <sighs> it's chaos. Oh, yeah. Hey, we found a spaceship. Yeah. I could do fine steed. Nice. Do I want it? Yeah, I'm gonna do fine speed. Wow. Nice. You never know. <laughs> it also attacks. It's my favorite thing. Yeah. All I got this level were um I got expertise. So I got expertise and two skills. So mm. I got a particular set of skills. So <laughs> Frank tried to make sure nobody could hear me, but I thwarted him. We can hear you. Yeah, but it wasn't going out streaming. Ah. Uh. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Uh, okay, so we've got our lineup. Uh, there's a knock on the door. Zadar goes ahead and wakes up Daphne, answers the door. Mm -hmm. It is Hortense. Ah. Uh, Hey guys, you're kind of late. <laughs> We're kind of late. <laughs> yep. Have you gotten your coffee yet? Of course I no, have. No, we have it. I didn't of get course coffee not. last time either. I'm cranky. She, she opens up her robe <gasps> and produces three cups of oh, coffee. Oh wow! I love uh, it. <laughs> she points out that uh, she went to your favorite place and asked Aton what each of you drank. And uh, with the help of two individuals of the guard, Aton was able to make your coffees. Uh, please put on your taverns and drink as we go. We need to get cracking. OK. Uh, as you exit your bungalow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is she going to be walking around naked again? Uh, as you exit the bungalow, you notice that crowds have already started to form on either side of the roadway, spotting the participant taverns. Each of you is giving a rousing send-off by the onlookers. Uh, nice. It gives off a carnival-like atmosphere. Once the group arrives at the gate, you are introduced to Otto Stegman. Uh, the fat, bald man is an individual from Hymona one of the seven, and mm -hmm. is in charge of the introductions. He will send the PCs over to stand with the other 18 participants. Each, She's not naked. You always say she wanders around naked. <laughs> <laughs> we keep hoping. It keeps uh, not happening. A trumpeting will sound, and the booming voice of Otto, magically enhanced, will captivate all present, even as the guards watch from the parapets. Uh, Otto says, ladies and gentlemen, I am Otto Stegman and will be introducing you to the first annual Olympiad. We have a set of contestants that the region's best and brightest will be competing in today. Individual uh, winners will receive medals, while the best overall team will gain cash and prizes. Let us give each of our competitors a nice, warm, cacophony welcome. The assembled crowd cheers loudly, and you can't help but feel robust as the crowd uh, cheers you on, being hometown favorites. <laughs> Once the applause dies down, Otto will show a large map of the city and give indications where each of the contestants or contests will be held. The first contest will be the line of red. Mm. Uh, this is an obstacle course, mm. ladies and gentlemen. It will take you outside the walls and over uh, small ditches and over stone obstacles. Each uh, the course is lined with small flags so that you may 
not get lost. You will be expected to touch these flags prior to proceeding to the next one. We have mm -hmm. spotters on the wall to confirm mm. that the rules are being adhered to, Damn. and the winding trail weaves around the hills and trenches outside the city. Thou shalt not use magic, for that oh, will come on. qualify you. <laughs> May I have the participants line up? Constitution, <laughs> Camille is the first one. Awesome. Now, uh, the way I wrote this is pretty straightforward. Uh, you are going to make... But those lines are not straight. No, they are not, because they zigzag. <laughs> uh, you will be rolling four times. I have already rolled and tabulated the results for all the others. That way I could save time and not sit there and go. <laughs> so what I need for Camille when she hears the starting gun is give me four constitution rolls with your bonus in constitution, if any, added. Uh, so with your first roll, the sound is heard. Give me your first roll. Six. Plus anything? No. <laughs> uh, good news. Uh, the Toman and the Berserker Enclave have both tripped. Uh, you are not in last place. You are in fifth place out of seven, though. Uh, give me a second roll. Uh, Nineteen. 19 is excellent as you start to close the gap, uh, especially since the Sensia, the elves, uh, their participant trips over the berserker guy, <laughs> who also <laughs> really chokes on his roll. However, the Katang, Princess Vistada's group, uh, oh, with a natural her. 20, is really hauling the mail. Uh, as you get three quarters through the way, give me your third roll. Fuck. Four. Still ahead of Sensia because they have fallen again with a two. Uh, however, Katang gets its second natural 20. Oh, fuck that. 13. <laughs> Uh, these, these were all rolled, uh, not at work, because that would be wrong, but sometime in between work and work. Uh, the final leg, as you start to hump there, uh, Meatballer, give me your last roll. Uh, 14. Is not bad. Again, the Toman representative trips with the one. The Sensia individual leaps over it. Uh, however, the Katang folks are hauling ass, and Morcutius crosses the line well ahead of everybody else. Is that outside? He's right there eating. Oh. <laughs> 43 points puts you in solid what? place. Fourth what? place? Oh my Fourth God. place oh, with bullshit. 43 points. I'm First, short. That's not fair. You guys chose, I didn't. Uh, that is the first of seven legs. So, congratulations. Uh, there's more coffee waiting for you at the end as a waits for you at the Western so Gate. short, all that coffee. Uh, the crowd uh, applauds everyone, including the last place finisher uh, of the Tomans. The hill dwarves, the Russian hill dwarves, uh, they failed to cross the line Aww. for anybody else. Uh, and that brings us, as Otto Stegman starts to yell, uh, to number two. The crowd gathers at the western gate and arrives in time to see the winner cross the entrance first. Roaring with approval, food and beverage vendors move through the crowd, helping at a price viewers enjoy the show these vendors also attend to each of the contestants as they cross the line and are given food and beverage for free aton pushes away the wine dealer and gives you a free cup of flying j java oh nice <laughs> oh yeah uh auto calls down from the wall which he has taken his position 
Uh, he can be seen and heard quite easily as his magic has worn off. He confirms the winner of the race was from the Katang Enclave, Mercutio. Uh, he raises his hand and is hailed as the victor. Uh, he then announces the start of stage number two. Assistants hold up the map. Come on, Frank, get on the ball. Uh, right here at the Western Gate, you see this gray line. Remember, this street goes at a heavy incline and causes a lot of problems for people. That being said, uh, he points out seven wagons filled with stones. Uh-oh. Heavy. I throwing stones? stones. Uh, he points out that each participant will either push or pull the wagon up to the top to the government plaza. Oh my. It is very important to tell us whether you push or pull uh, because that's going to be important. And that means Daphne, take the line. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, is it a wheelbarrow or like a wagon? Actually? Like a radio flyer. Mm. I don't even know what that is. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, we're thank, old. <laughs> thank you, and go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a standard wagon with a pull arm. A little red wagon? Yeah, a little red How wagon. How would you tie it to you? You can tie Wait, it to you. If you're, well, don't you pull it anyway? You never push those. You're going up a hill. You notice, if this helps... Uh, I feel like I'd want to be in front of the rocks not behind them. The Berserker and the Tolosians agree. Uh, the Tolosians are the American Indians whom you saved from the bottom of the bay. Hmm. Uh, they are going to pull. Everybody else has decided going to push. All right, I'll pull it like gonna, a horse. You're going to pull at a girl. Uh, <laughs> everybody takes the line. Uh, the Tomans uh, appear to be drunk. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> the Russian hill doors are uh, drinking a lot of something. Uh, so we aren't really sure how they're going to do. Uh, a trumpet sounds and everybody takes off. Uh, Daphne, give me a perception check real quick. Oh, no. 12. You notice the berserker pushing his wagon goes <laughs> up and over with a natural one. And the wagon <laughs> rolls back out the gate. He has to chase it down. Give me your first strength roll to push your little red wagon up this big hill. It's like on D20, right? D20. Add your strength. <laughs> Ooh, I got a solid five with my modifier. With your modifier? That was a really <laughs> bad roll. Uh, if uh, Daphne had testicles, she would only have one of them right <laughs> now. Uh, as you and the Berserker and the Katang have your problems, you notice Hymona is not doing much better. But the the Tomans, that fucker drunk, is hauling the mail with a 20. Uh, he Jeez. takes a solid lead. Uh, keep going, Daphne. Give me a second roll. 17 for the next one. Nice. Uh, unfortunately for the Berserkers, he has rolled another one. There is wagon goes into the wall this time, narrowly missing a guard that he almost killed. <laughs> and creep forward on the lead, which is still held by the Tomans. Uh, you get three quarters of the way up the hill, and the crowd is cheering, cheering for you, I say. Daphne, what is your result? Twelve. Not bad. Uh, the Toman has started to slip, and you are starting to pull even. Uh, the crowd begins to laugh hysterically as, no shit, three ones in a row for nice. the berserkers. Uh <laughs> This time, he says, fuck it in his home language and picks up 
the heavy wagon. Final roll, Daphne, as you are racing against time with the Tomans. And it's 20, but not natural. That's okay. Uh, the race ends, and the, the Katang, or I'm sorry, the Berserkers uh, come in last. The, I just see them throwing the rocks at everyone in the crowd. An individual named Claude performed poorly for the Berserkers as uh, you start to reach the finish line. You are just short of the Tomans. The Russian Hill Dwarves have beat you by four paces. However, you will not get an individual medal, but you have pulled your team forward on that. That could be important here. Uh, leg number three. Uh, and again, this was written before these guys. You guys, folks at home, you guys heard these guys decide how they were going to do it, so I don't know. Yeah. Why am I next again? No. I don't think so. Number Wisdom. three. Number three is in the political plaza and it is a game called are you smarter than a peasant <laughs> <laughs> this nice. will be intelligence uh which is camille again camille, she you end, got this she ends you are. Day early now this one's going to be played out a little bit differently there are seven small tables you know something like the president would sit at and look like a doof and you will sit there next to some scholars who will give you the question written in a language you can understand. You <laughs> may opt to straight up answer it. And if you do, and you're correct, you will get 20 points. Boom. <laughs> Plus whatever intelligence modifier you have. If you do not want to risk it, you may roll the dice. Mm. Camille, mm. do you understand the rules as written? I think so. Okay. So, Otto doesn't much care for Are You Smarter Than a Peasant? <laughs> but he tells the scribes to go ahead and deliver the first question to each participant. Camille, first question. Once I read it, you will decide. I will try and answer it. Or fuck this, I'm going to roll for it. Eight is to four, as ten is to what? Is it three? Is it seven? Is it 24? Or is it five? And let me go ahead and copy that over. No helping. <laughs> che cheating will not be allowed. So... Camille, do you, and you know what? Now I got to roll to see if they spotted you cheating. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> okay, I know that answer. Okay, so Camille, in the in the Zoom chat, you see the question. Do you want to answer it or roll for it? Uh, I'll answer it. Okay, what is the answer? Five. It's A, B, C, or D. Oh, so sorry. That D. is a fail. <laughs> <laughs> what is your intelligence modifier? Uh, three. You have scored 23 points. Question number two, unless you got caught cheating. There's too uh, much pressure. Then you're fucked. <laughs> math. Just never pick out my teeth. <laughs> okay, I will deliver the question first before I read it to everybody else. Uh, question number two. What is the average speed for a giant vulture pursuing a blood hawk? Is it A... 14 feet squared minus the distance between them when starting the run. Two times the speed of the hypotenuse of a single angle. C, I'll it just depends. I'll right here. We're going to roll for this bitch. We will, you know what? We have to let the audience All right. <laughs> C, <laughs> if, it, if it depends, it depends if the hawk is from the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. Thank you, Monty Python. I was about to say that. <laughs> or D. You need, if, like, Go 
Uh, D, if the vulture is female with eggs, it is normal speed times 1.5. If the vulture is with younglings, it is normal speed times 2.4. And if the vulture is barren, it is normal speed only. Camille, would you like to hazard a guess or make a roll? I will make a roll. Make your roll. You need like a pie along with us and people can like answer. 14. Brings it up to 17. Uh, you have successfully surmised that it is two times the speed of the hypotenuse of the attack angle. Of course. Of course. Duh. Duh. Uh, <laughs> most of the crowd is looking at you except for the Hymona delegation, which is sitting there quite smugly as they seem to be doing just as well as you. As you can imagine, the berserker total is far less on this particular aspect. So far, they rolled a three minus three and a four <laughs> minus three. So they're a little bit in the hole. Uh, Hymona, however, uh, is, is almost neck and neck with you. Uh, that brings us to question three as Otto Stegman <sighs> yawns because he doesn't give a shit about intelligence. <laughs> uh, the next question is a word problem. So, which of the following letters can be arranged in a five-letter common language word? Uh, folks at home, it's H-R-G-S-T-R-I-L-S-P-T-O-O-M-T-W-Q-R- G S. Camille, would you like to try and solve the puzzle or make a roll? Is this English language? For you, it would be English language. Uh, for Camille, it would be common. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, two of them are easily crossed off. Yeah. I'm. I'm <laughs> gonna say B. B. E. Is the wrong answer. Ah, damn it. C is the wrong answer. Or what? C is the correct answer. Mata. Wow. Camille, roll 2d20. Give me the low. No modifier. 10. Yeah, you got 10 points out of it. Uh, is it what? What's the word? Totem? T O T O M? Uh, Mata. Mata. That's like, what? What? Motto, M O T T O, motto. Oh. Motto. Uh, Isn't that technically slang? <laughs> motto? No. 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 My motto slang. is the dice giveth <laughs> and the dice taketh away. Uh, Camille. <laughs> for something. The Hymona people. Oh, I have something in <laughs> She's my eye. Like, uh, Hymona would be, uh, we did a uh, show in there. That's the Romeo and Juliet town. It is to the north of you guys. Final question. Uh, the crowd is growing with anticipation. It's not real. <laughs> uh, final question. It's a word question. Da, 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 da. Question is to you. Uh, find two words, one from each group that is closest in meaning. Oh, by the way, the berserker has already broken his table. Okay, uh, of course group he has. A, talkative, job, and ecstatic. Group B, angry, wind, and loquacious. Your job is to figure out which two words are closest in meaning. Is it A, talkative, and wind? Is it B, job and angry is it c talkative and loquacious or is it d ecstatic and angry camille do you want to roll for it or do you want to solve it okay i don't understand find two words one from each group that are the closest in meaning so one for a and one for b correct okay uh or you can roll for it by the way i 
pulled these off the internet except for the hawk question. I just had to make. I was going to say that that loquacious one sounds like someone gets. Hey, hey, hey! Are you cheating? Email. Are you cheating? She's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping an eye on you there, Tiefling. <laughs> hey, all I'm saying is there's one that I think a lot of people could agree with could be similar. <laughs> you want to go to jail tonight? Is that what you want to do? All the time. <laughs> Every day. All right, I'll guess. Hey, you saw my mugshots. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Go ahead. Make your guess. C and D. No, it can only be one of them. The ones from the <laughs> so, the lineup. One um, one for both A and B. One from A, one from B. So like you said C and D. So talkative is in group A, loquacious is in group B. Uh-huh. D can I, like, ecstatic. Please? No, you cannot. Ecstatic is from group A, angry is from group B. All of these are one is from A and one is from B. So which is the closest one? There you go. I'm going to roll for this because I just okay. don't get it. Go ahead. You can't pass it on to a teammate? No. <laughs> you can't call a the, friend. The rules were explained. <laughs> is it cheating if I go, it's like me? <laughs> uh, ruthless. <laughs> ruthless, yeah. not a word. ruthless right, and deadly. Like... <laughs> 14 plus 3. Mm -hmm. 17. A look of great consternation crosses the Hymona delegate, uh, and the berserker breaks his chair as well and begins to beat the cobblestones profusely as he got a three, zero, four, one, one minus two, and six, three for a total of two fucking points. I'll buy him uh, a beer later. <laughs> Camille. We. Uh, you won. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out by how much. <laughs> yeah, those Hymona people can suck it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Otto. Huh? 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 Oh, uh, congratulations to the Cacophony team. Uh, 67 points. Uh, sadly, Claude, who just broke his uh, little wagon uh, mm -hmm. also is not very smart uh, he's pissed but he's done for the day as yeah, are you Camille yeah. uh, it is a short walk over to the market square uh, where the next item uh, the ever popular Revenge of the Nerds performance aspect oh, my goodness. will go on now folks at home I told these three individuals that they would need to come up with a skill or a performance kind of idea and then they would have to perform it i didn't tell them that only one would be performing it zadar with charisma charisma, mm -hmm. charisma. you were like send us a something and i was like oh is this for everyone <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I had to fool you though the crowd moves to the market square near the north gate to experience the next stage of competition. As teammates console and congratulate each other, uh, the berserkers are not having a good day. Uh, their envoys do tell them that you can do better. Uh, Camille, Zadar, and Daphne, you're getting a thumbs up from Fumunda. Uh, he, he can smell the victory coming. Uh, mm -hmm. Otto stands atop a small stage erected in the middle of the market and calls for quiet. Uh, he calls each member competing to the top of the stage and introduces them respectively. Uh, Zadar, your position. Number one, dude, you go first. You got to warm the crowd up. I don't know if that's going to be a good thing. <laughs> bad thing. Actually, I do know exactly what that means. <laughs> so Zadar. What have you come up with as your talent? This is uh, the Miss America talent portion. Okay, I'm going to first describe what I look like. I look like a ripped Kumail Nanjiani from his picture. When, uh, <laughs> I don't know who that is. For, for their models. Yeah, you do. Yeah, uh, you do. <laughs> uh, he's uh, Indian. Uh, uh, he's in uh, Silicon oh, Valley. Oh, him. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the ripped photo yeah. when he got in shape that his dad yeah. shows everybody that's my son. Okay, uh, fair enough, Zidar. What, how are you going to wow this crowd? 
It's gonna be dancing. We're talking Bollywood, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I do the audio um, uh, illusion and all that. So at least two of your going. <laughs> at least two of your roles is gonna be a one. I just <laughs> this heartily. Uh, Otto says, "What is your talent?" And you tell him, and he goes, "Ha, ah, okay, a, a dance, a, a dance." Hey, I got the music uh, going, there, so. You know, there could be people in the crowd that would appreciate that. Well, <laughs> what we're going to do is he's going to do his performance, uh, and then he's going to see what each 25% of the crowd felt. Uh, so, Zadar, you do your best Bollywood uh, shindig. Oh, yeah. I would have gone with breaking two boogaloo. But, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. You know, get some cardboard. Uh, yeah. And of course, Daphne has no idea what that is. So That's the finale. That's the cardboard. Uh, that's right. I thought it was fireworks. Oh no, that, that was Revenge of the Nerds. Okay, yeah. Sadar gets up there and moves his silky body all over the stage like he is a professional pole dancer. Sadar, <laughs> uh, for those behind you looking at your ripped buttocks <laughs> i left your... the tab in flex <laughs> give me your persuasion role uh which is just charisma modifier okay got it not persuasion just charisma 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 modifier right yep what is that uh let's see my charisma modifier is a plus four Whew. okay what is your first roll uh what am i rolling just a straight d20 straight d20 Yikes. Okay. It is a big whopping 11. <laughs> so 15. Right? Yep. Uh, to the folks on your left, uh, off to your left, how did you fare with them? Apparently you got flabby ass cheeks. Oh, or they were hoping for Dong, and it did not show up. I, I think it was the latter. They were hoping for Dong, and it didn't show. They wanted the elephant peak. <laughs> nice. Oh, no. <laughs> Daphne's like, no. Yeah, Daphne just got weirded out. Okay. <laughs> Oh, what is your you second the role? Helicopter dick? <laughs> that's yeah, next. That's, it. That's, <laughs> na that's the front crowd. <laughs> Natural 20, so they got the dong. <laughs> 24, they got side dong. One of the twins has popped out of your speedo. Uh, as oh, no. Daphne has alluded to earlier, uh, also, folks, this is for mature audiences only, uh, give them the helicopter, Sadar. <laughs> Let's see how well you impress them. Okay. We're going Put for the tassels the on it. Yeah. Give them the CS. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give him the dance, man. Give the, uh, <laughs> the wiggly eyes. <laughs> All right, 16. Plus four is a 20. Fair enough. Uh, over to the right side where Otto Stegman, with his mouth agape, <laughs> is stunned at this sensual dance. What is your roll? Uh, what am I rolling again? Uh, straight, straight? Straight D20. Twenty natural twenty. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, I don't think I have to add much. Uh, Jesus Christ! Uh, that is a big number. Uh, you watch as the Toman delegation uh, performs a singing uh, performance. Uh, it's more of a rude limerick linked together. Uh, as you watch all of them, uh, the Katang delegation led by Abdullah. I always performs... think you're saying Poontang. Sorry. <laughs> Katang. I know. Uh, he performs an eloquent reading, uh, which which does wow the crowd. Uh, last but not least, Hymona. Hymen. Uh, does not do well at all because they opt. Oh, dear oh God, my God, really? for the mime. <laughs> <laughs> they do a mime routine, and the crowd is, again, shell-shocked. Uh, <laughs> slightly worse than the harp playing by the elves. Oh, slightly nice. worse. Uh, Otto 
uh, still flustered at the. Uh oh. What's that? Time's up. At the sexual dance of Zadar, <laughs> claims him the winner. Uh, quite honestly, by twenty points, it was a landslide as the crowd was intrigued by aroused. the value. <laughs> They were aroused. <laughs> uh, leading us to leg five, which may make many of them uncomfortable. Uh, it starts at the top of the hill, leading down to the docks. Mm. And this is going to be Dexterity, Yikes. which is Zadar. Okay. Fortunately, Zadar... <laughs> Uh, and something I did not tell any of them. If you have to do two competitions in a row, you're suffering a minus two penalty. Aww. Aww. That's bullshit. Aww. That tough shit. That's, I, you know what? I'd say I didn't write it, but I did. But I wrote it before you guys even picked. <laughs> so all of your rolls will be at a minus two. Oh, uh, <clears throat> As the participants get ready to race down the incline, Otto yells to the crowd to line both sides of the curving, descending road. At a hand signal, everybody raises a small pouch and jingles it. Oh, my. Nice. <laughs> you, and, you and the other runners perceive this to be nothing more than a foot race. Otto lowers his hand, and everybody spills the marble contents oh. of the pouch <laughs> nice. covering the raceway. He looks at you and goes, except to Zadar, which he goes, he'll <laughs> 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 oh, kind of no. weirded out by the sensual dance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> your job is a foot race. Okay. Hopefully, you dodge the marbles. Yeah, if that, they're going to get a face <laughs> full of marbles. <laughs> you, you may get injured here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the trumpet sounds, and the race is on. Minus two to your rolls, Zadar. Oh, what is your dexterity modifier? Uh, my dex is a four. It's a four modifier. So you get plus two to your rolls total. Your okay. first roll. First roll is 16. Total or 18? Uh, it'll be 18 total. Uh, you leap over the Toman representative as Vladimir has passed out already. Uh, <laughs> he has taken a nosedive. However, you are clearly behind the Berserkers, the Hymona, and the Telosian. Oh. Roll number two, as their fleet-footed nature guides them through the myriad of marbles. Oh, okay. Uh, 18 total. 18 total? Mm -hmm. uh, you are still flagging behind the Telosian, but you have pulled forward with the Hymona representative. Uh, the Berserker didn't have much luck, uh, and the Elf... Uh, hit the wall. Uh, oh. An elf? <laughs> they haven't been doing well. What's up? Uh, you know what? Dice give it. Dice take it away. Oh, she's uh, on the red. Three quarters of the way down. What is your roll? Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, with that, that's not too good. That's 12 total. <laughs> Uh, the Katang also had their problems, as did the Telosian. Uh, however, Hymona has uh, done well, and the Elven Sensia has hit a marble. <laughs> <laughs> as did the Toman Drunk Dwarf. Uh, final leg, as you see the end in sight. What is your role? Okay. The roll is, god damn it, come on. Oh. It is a, um, yeah, uh, an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Not so hot. 
Uh, the Hymona never faltered. Uh, wow. 56 points. Uh, however, uh, whereas everyone else had to look at your ass last time, you look at the ass of 59, the Berserkers, which uh -oh. Hairy asses. Ew. Uh, the Tolosians, uh, the American Indians, and Hymona blows past everybody with a 70. While you did fare better than a couple, you did not come out on top this time. Uh oh. On the docks, the final challenge. Come on, final Daphne. Final challenge. The city moves to the edge of the docks, and Otto has quite the time, difficult time in getting people's attention. With the finale arriving, the people are buzzing with anticipation. Otto hoists himself up on a pair of sturdy men that lift him atop the roof of your bungalow. He's what the hell? Fucking roof. Uh, well, you guys are <coughs> right there at the dock entrance. Uh, yelling, he finally gets everyone calm and explains the last challenge. For the Olympians. This is going to be messy, Daphne. You will be provided with clues. Oh. From answering a clue, it will lead you to another spot on the docks where you will be given another clue until you get the final clue and solve the puzzle. As with Camille, once you get a clue, you will have the option of rolling or trying to yeah. figure it out for yourself. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Let me throw something up real quick. Uh, first off, I better grab these. Now I will move this. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Your first clue is a hog's treat, but not to eat. Dig too deep and water may seep. So it's leading you to a location. And I'll go ahead. Oh, I have to pick a location? You have to pick a location, or if you would prefer, uh, you may go ahead and just roll for it. A hog's treat, but not to eat. Dig too deep, and water may seep. I'm just thinking of truffles, but... Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> So do you want to go to the Gilded Truffle? Oh, that's a place? I'm trying to read all these names. Yep, that's... I'm going to go there. What is your wisdom modifier? Uh, plus one. 21. As the owner of the hey. Gilded Truffle gives you an envelope. You open hey. the envelope, and right behind you, Toman... Telosian, the Zerkers for some reason, and Hymona are right on your heels. You open your second envelope. Water churns as the stone turns. Mind your manners. What? The water churns as the stone turns. Mind your manners. You may take a guess at the map. Or you may roll for it instead. And we can't help, can we? You cannot help. Damn it. At the risk of getting DQ'd. Mm. Oh. Stone. My water turns stone turn. I don't know, something like that. It's. It sounds like rocks being tumbled, but I don't think there's a rock tumbler. <laughs> I believe there's a jeweler there. All right. That Don't sounds lead her. Good. I, I, I'm, 
I'm checking. I'm trying myself. to read the map. <laughs> sure. That's why I'm giving you time. Yeah. Or you can just simply roll for it. Hope that your wisdom is good enough. Like, I believe you with the jeweler, because that would make sense. You're like, and you don't want to steal it. Okay. Uh, the only other thing I, I can I'm gonna, think of, whatever uh, the grindstone is, I don't even know what that is. Food. You've been there for. We've been there. <laughs> we have? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh. That's where you found uh, the pirate, the goblin pirate. Uh, I stand corrected. I do not see a jeweler on here. <laughs> I see several pawn shops. So, uh, your choice. Would you like to choose something or roll for it? If you choose and you're wrong, no modifier and at disadvantage. Mm -hmm. If you roll for it, straight up roll. Your choice entirely. Can you say it one more time? I can indeed. The water churns as the stone turns. Mind your manners. And I'm going to need an answer or I'm going to need a roll. Uh, all right. I may just roll for it. Okay. I feel like I should be able to solve it, but... Nice. I got that 20. There you go. 21. It is the grindstone. Uh, looks <laughs> of concern cross everybody's face as you seemingly are blowing through this process with very little difficulty. You receive an envelope from the members who you have forgotten at the grindstone. And it says, a delicate flower that collects many cacti, not in a desert, but washed ashore. A delicate flower that collects many cacti, not in a desert, but washed ashore. Are you talking about like, uh, <clears throat> nah, it's not it's kelp and stuff. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Articles, that's what I was trying to think of. But they're not flowers. They are crustaceans, I think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. They are somewhat alive, but I don't know to what degree. A delicate flower that collects many cacti, not in a desert, but washed ashore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These, of course, I made up, so. <laughs> Did you? Yep. There's Barnacle Inn. There's also Surfside Tavern. A delicate flower that collects many cacti. Not in Sorry. a desert, but washed ashore. <laughs> Sorry, my eyes are so close when you guys see me. <laughs> your finger that's close <laughs> <laughs> now it's my eye <laughs> she started on the red mm -hmm. she did <laughs> i mentioned that a while ago yep <clears throat> what do you think daphne you want to risk it or roll for it i feel like it's nothing on the top da, 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 da. Wait, shrimp aren't flowers, are they? They're Santa's <laughs> laughing at me. Yeah. That collects cacti. It's like sounding like something that's collecting, like fucking, not even shit. Just like literally being stabbed to death. A delicate flower that collects many cacti, not in a desert, but washed ashore. I final answer. Um, you want to roll or you want to pick? <laughs> Well, um, doesn't matter, I guess. I roll and I got the net one. Oh. Wah, wah. My guess was Barnacle in, so I don't know. After losing that valuable lead, you realize 
a delicate flower that collects many cacti means a delicate flower that collects many pricks. I was going to say yeah, Petticoat gonna say, Junction. Yep. And you head to uh, Petticoat Junction uh, and get envelope number four. Much to the happiness of the other participants who have pulled close. The fourth envelope opens and it says, don't get caught over the barrel and use a slick getaway. Hmm. Don't get caught over the barrel and use a slick getaway. At the Ooh, is it oil or is it ale? Hmm. Is oil normally in barrels? I think they do. Well, depends on which type you're getting. Drums. I'm going to say the oil importer. Because if it's slick, I mean, ale isn't really slick, is it? The tiefling whisks back her hair and clearly says... This is the oil importer who proudly gives her the final clue. Nice. Look Ooh. for victory among the animals as they block the prize. Oh. This is a bonus. Sorry. What? Look for. Look for victory among the animals as they block the prize. What, the exotic animals? Or is it leather goods? Exotic. What was it? Sorry, say it one last time. It, looking for victory among the animals as they block the prize. Is it just exotic animals? Is that your answer? Yeah. I don't know. What's people? Unless it's leather goods, that's the only other one I would consider, but I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> that's bad. Uh, <laughs> as you head to the exotic animals, you notice that some of your competitors head out to the docks. There you see the Pegasus, the Minotaur, oh. the Valley Cow, and behind them, encircled, is the HMS Victory. Oh, uh, so I totally missed the victory? You totally missed the victory, but that was a bonus adding up your scores <laughs> with a one <laughs> you arrived with 64 points you daphne sadly came in first oh. ah. <laughs> and you will be entitled to the medal uh, all of the participants are joined uh, by their colleagues and their envoys and congratulated on a fun day. Otto tells everybody that dinner will be served for the participants as well as the medal celebration up at the government plaza. Uh, nice. Famunda, all four other council uh, people and Hortense uh, <laughs> greet you and tell you that you have all done a marvelous job. Unfortunately, nobody knows what the score is yet. Uh, so the crowd returns to the government plaza where the announcement is going to be made. Tired from the long day, you regroup with your associates and swap stories of how you think you did. Uh, <laughs> as you arrive, you are ushered to the front of the prehistoric skull. Oh, Otto yes. Stegman is present. Nice. Give me a minute. I've got to tally up your points. Come on, Otto. You should have had this already. <laughs> Guys, just finished. Top I've top. got the points. I got the points for everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take Pazard. your shoes off. It'll be faster. Right, for Zadard, uh, tally is the operative word. It's the whacker. <laughs> Uh, a lot of weird scores, so I'm using the calculator. And the oh, answer is... On. Huh. No shit. Uh-oh. Not what I expected. Well, that doesn't sound good. 
Otto no. Stegman stands atop the prehistoric skull prior to you guys getting to eat and holds in his hand a stack of papers. Ladies and gentlemen, magically enhanced again, the numbers have been tallied. We have a clear winner. Starting with number three who is also tied for number two. What? The delegates from Hymona have accumulated 317 points. Congratulations, Hymona. Tied with Hymona, also with 317 points, the members of the Katang delegation. Well done, Katang. Wang. The moment you have all been waiting for. Uh -oh. The Come undisputed on winner with 369 points. Cacophony has won Woo! the first Olympiad. Nice. We are awesome. We are awesome. 369 fucking points. That is <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, individual medals will be handed out first. Each of you has garnered a golden circlet. Uh, nice. Congratulations. Uh, finally, you will all be brought up on top of the prehistoric skull and honored. Folks, all of these numbers were done before these guys even decided what they were going to play. <laughs> uh, so there's no cheating, no preordained victory. I don't know how you guys did it, but you did it. Uh, congratulations are in order. Uh, you have achieved victory. Uh, and everybody is happy. The other competitors come up to you, congratulate you warmly, including the elves, uh, the berserkers. Yeah. Next time. Next time, my friend. We will get you next time. Can I buy you a beer? They would love for you to buy oh. them a beer. Yeah, we're buying drinks. <laughs> uh, goodwill. Uh, good good move. Uh, goodwill is given by everybody. No one has, has taken this overly serious uh, except for Claude, who performed poorly in two successive events. Uh, he got a total of 24 oh. points in the wagon draw and two in the uh knowledge base aspect uh, i give clearly, him a hug clearly the worst he's kind of uh, gritty <laughs> that's all right i'll hug him no dinner shame. dinner is served uh everybody laughs everybody is happy uh all of the competitors talk to each other uh there is no ill will uh however we have to determine if someone cheated Ah. Uh, Six. No, no cheating has been observed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no cheating has been observed. Nice. So, you just waving my hand. You are passed. Um. Do we get like individual individual results if I can talk? Yes, you each one of you got a golden circlet. Uh, no, who got the highest points? Oh, I I don't know. Oh, man. You mean all together? Like individual each person, yeah. Uh in for leg 1, uh the Katang one, Marcellus or Mercutio, sorry. Uh Leg two, the Toman delegate, Drago. Drago, the wagon guy. Mm -hmm. uh, leg what? three was Camille. Leg four was uh, Mr. Nutsack. <laughs> uh, number five was Antoinette from Hymona. And, of course, you won the last one. So, oh, But there's no collective. Like, you, everyone did it twice. No, you guys only did two each. Uh, you guys enjoy a spirited meal, a spirited drink. A lot of stories are swapped, uh, even with some interpreters. You guys have some good jokes. 
uh, and you head back victorious, each one of you wearing a circlet, uh, to your home. Uh, with the trade conference over and the games uh, done to give everyone a respite from a long day, you finally get the chance to sit back and relax. But a knock is at your door. Uh oh. Who wants to get up and answer it? I'll do it this time. I did it last time. <laughs> Camille, you get up and answer it. Hortense! Dark Elf and Second in Command at the Adventurer's Guild is present. What's up, witch? <laughs> she brought you coffee, you ungrateful bitch. Oh, I was being <laughs> funny. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, she apologizes for the disturbance and points out that both councilmen from under these nuts and Guildmaster Fauntleroy need to speak with you at the Guild, preferably right away. Oh, what the fuck? Hortense points out that there is no job per se, but the pair have lined up some meetings for you, so you do not need to arm yourselves. Mm. Do you go with her? Yeah, but I'm taking arms with me. That's fine. After arriving at the guild, you notice several familiar envoys waiting in the main room. The groups are admiring the various trinkets that hang on the wall, because you guys work at an Applebee's, and each nods <laughs> politely to you. Hortense directs you to a back room where Fomunda and Fauntleroy eagerly, eagerly await you. The two thank you for coming in at such a late hour and begin to explain what is going on. The envoys are slated to leave at first light as the tide goes out, but several have asked to meet you in quiet quarters. <laughs> Fomunda explains that your fame has garnered much attention, and while they will always, uh, while you will always be members of Cacophony's Adventurer's Guild, job opportunities have come to light for you. Pointing out that he only wants to see each of you succeed in any manner that you deem fit. Uh, I just lost my place. Oh, he asks for you to come and hear out the envoys and the opportunities they have to offer. They give you, uh, they, I keep losing my place. <clears throat> he reminds you that you are under no obligation to accept any of these offers that they give, and you are more than welcome to remain in the service of Cacophony. Mm. Fauntleroy suggests that you hold your answer until you have heard each group out, but an answer will be expected to be given this evening. Do you have any questions before they bring in the individual envoys? No. Yeah. Essentially, uh, you got some job opportunities headed your way because you guys are now famous fuckers. So, <laughs> once the party agrees, Fomunda and Fauntleroy tell them good luck and usher in each group to speak with the party alone. Fauntleroy and Fomunda will not be present. They have mixed emotions, but will only be looking out for the good of you and your development. Are they crying? Tell me they're crying. This is Aww. not Rudy. They are not crying. Oh, come on. Aww. The first <laughs> ones they introduce are the Talosians. Uh, the drunken Russian hill dwarves. <laughs> the Russian hill dwarves. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The Talosians are the American Indians. Yeah. Uh, Talana and Hemtra the Seductress enter and greet you warmly. They again thank you for your underwater rescue and have offered to pay for half the damage to the docks caused when Daphne dropped Bye. the magical palace. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's how they start it out. They will explain that they are fascinated with your skills and abilities uh, shown by the people of Cacophony, especially you guys. Uh, they explain that their people live on the open plains and are free to roam where they want, so the concept of a walled city is somewhat foreign to them. A brief history as to the last ruler is given by Talana, and thus your job opportunity. Hemta will explain that she is the recognized leader of the coalition of tribes, and in order to bring back everyone to the fold, so to speak, she needs to take possession of the ancient Tower of the Curd. This haunted landmark has sat empty for several decades after the last unified leader of the Talosians 
went insane and slaughtered her court. The party is asked to venture into the tower and clear it of any evil, undead, or trespassers. The rewards offered, you will be allowed to live in the land of carefree life, having never to work again. You will be serving in her court and be treated as members of the hierarchy of the tribes. Alternatively, she may be willing to part with Petrick's palace. Ooh. She, she and Talana again thank you for your service and humbly await your answer. They walk out. Famunda and Fauntleroy bring in the Berserker next. <laughs> And introduce <clears throat> Oric the Stinky to oh, you. Oh no. <laughs> he enters eating a leg of mutton, and his overall appearance is rather dirty, but he smells of lilac, which doesn't really jive with his name. Interesting. The berserkers don't much care for the smell of lilac. Uh, he will put his deerskin boots up on the table you are seated at and begin to and continue to eat his meat while looking at each of you trying to size you up. Having never met the individual, you aren't sure what to think yet, unless you've already come to some preconceived notion. Hey, I asked him, can I have some of that meat? I ha didn't get enough to eat tonight. Thank D you, D12 buddy. against me. Nice. <laughs> He gingerly holds it out and allows you to take a nibble or two. Uh, I lick his finger. <laughs> Things are getting spicy. He smells like lilac. I like lilac. He likes that. Okay. After a few moments, he begins to pick his teeth and wipe the residue on his leggings before announcing, I like you. I like you. I really like you. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard good things about you. I would like for you to come to my land, Freakland, uh, and we can go hunt the White Death. I think we could kill that son of a bitch with your help. What is the White Death? White Death is a legendary ape that roams the cold lands of Freckland. While sightings are rare, it has been identified by multiple parties of reasonable reputation. This would be akin to a Bigfoot or a King Kong type of creature. Nice. He, he offers to share the skin of the creature, which is believed to have granted magic powers to its owner. After that, you can go to the various ruins in the land uh, and hunt for magical weapons as they were plentiful in Frickland. Mm. And you, you may come with me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I bat my eyelashes at him. He tosses the leg of mutton to you uh, of what he hasn't devoured, wipes his hands off, mm. bows dramatically, Gets up. Oh, man. The hygiene could be <laughs> Yeah, but he smells like lilac. Yeah. He exits. Uh, Fabanda and Fauntleroy are puzzled. They call for the third group. The envoy from Hymona comes in. Her name is Duchess Villanova, and she enters with a chalky face and a robust hemline. Think Marie Antoinette. She will introduce herself as the ruler of the city-state to the north, but I'm sure you already knew that. She appreciates how you three fared in the games and of her great tales of your even greater exploits. She feels that you would do well as ambassadors in her court and has no real job for you other than uh, eye candy, especially you, McNuggets. <laughs> so you like the banana dance. Uh. She likes the banana hammock. Uh, she offers you a life of luxury until there's a governmental change. Mm -hmm. uh, good climate, a coastal city, and a plantation will be given to you. 
complete with an orchard just outside her beloved city. All you have to do is say yes. I extend a hand, which is not quite what you are extending, Zadar. Oh, okay. <laughs> she gets up, gives you a polite bow, grabs the door handle. Oh, no. <laughs> Good evening to all of you. Pulls out a hanky and opens up the door and walks out doing this. Uh, Fauntleroy comes in with a rag and cleans off the doorknob. Thank oh, you, man. COVID. <laughs> uh, next up is the familiar figure of General Missy Tulork uh, from Sensia. Uh, the elven lady uh, shows up with Alwyn, who came in second to Camille at the intelligence test. The warrior will point out that you did an impressive job at the games, and while not thrilled, uh, she was request. Whoa, wait a minute. Are you having a stroke? Oh, oh, okay, I got it. <laughs> uh, you did an impressive job at the games, and while not thrilled, uh, was impressed at you guys finding the dump of a dwarf uh, when he got lost whoring around. Uh, she would like to extend a professional invitation for you to come visit their empire. She will point out that they are the home of magic and the party can study in the center of the world in their land. Her tone will be cold and it will be clear that the offer did not come from her and she is being <clears throat> forced to extend it. Uh, the rewards are clear. Sensia is the main empire in the region, and the old land has more information contained in their libraries than any other place, except for possibly the Anduran Gnomish lands. Uh, the old empire is on everyone's to-do list to visit for the monuments and the stark power of the monarchy. Hmm. She gives you a bow and walks out. Uh... Her associate, Alwyn, gives a deep bow to Camille. Well done in defeating me. Next up are the Tomans. The drunken Russian hill dwarves. Rodrigo Clendenin and Capo enter. And nice. each of them appear more than a bit drunk. <laughs> Tankards will slosh around, and Rodrigo will give each of you a big hug before the pair plop down in their seats and get to the point. Oh, no. You three are pretty special. You saved me. I appreciate that. You have seen things, <laughs> and you have done things. We've seen way and, too much. And that is good. <laughs> but only within the walls of this city. You... You need to branch out and explore the big world. <laughs> While we are not big, we are big in heart, and that is what matters. Yeah. I would suggest that you come visit Toman and let me show my people what true heroes look like. We can even go hunting the mighty Queso. Cheese? Cheese dip? Capo sees your confusion <laughs> and explains. <laughs> <laughs> while Rodrigo guzzles more of his drink. Nice. The queso is a mythical frog-lizard mix that lives in the marshes of their country. A lot of legends surround the fierce beast, but none have been substantiated, as most who go looking for the creature don't come back, don't find it, or are too drunk to believe. <laughs> Our land is marshy land, uh, as we sit in a peninsula region just outside of those stupid elves uh the rewards are simple as rodrigo finishes his drink you'll drink a lot you'll be honored guest uh, you will make more reputation points uh i will even throw in some magic weapons or armor for you and you get to hang with us so who could say no you got any women for you know this guy over here <laughs> I, yes, we have women. Can, Do you have I any ale here? <laughs> oh, that's true. Do you have ale? 
Okay, uh, I am thirsty. Sure, Capo, we, let's go. Yeah. Uh, if you choose us, you, if you don't choose us, you are still my favorite people in this oh. bullshit city. <laughs> I, lo I love you guys. Let's go get some ale. We love you, man. They open the door, <laughs> stagger out. Last but not least, <laughs> Montleroy and Famunda bring in a huge man <laughs> wearing a turban. This guy is about the biggest person you've seen. Behind him, a leith young figure that you well recognize as Princess Vistada. Aww, very oh, nice. Vistada. <laughs> These are the Katang people, and this is Caliph Majesto. The Caliph will see the mess left by the dwarves, and with a glint of disgust, he will make his opinion known. Mm -hmm. Princess Vistada, on the other hand, will be thrilled to see each of you and greet each one of you very respectfully, which will give her father pause as a princess of the Katang should not be bowing down to adventurers. <laughs> uh, she will expound on how the trio, you three, saved her from a ruffian and taught her many things that the teachers in her homeland could not. Ruffians? <laughs> The that's why I chose it. The <laughs> Caliph will be puzzled and will then get down to business. While he sits down in the chair, he still towers above even Daphne the Tiefling Please. because this man is huge. Goodness. I understand that you three are people who can get things done. I do not know if you understand our culture, but we were once a great empire, greater than the elves, until our capital fell with great magic. With the government fractured, the land decayed into squabbling fiefdoms ruled by various people. My family has ruled the longest, and we are, arguably, the most powerful. We are, however, not powerful enough to reclaim the glory of the old empire without... without assistance. My beloved daughter feels that you three may be able to assist us in our time of need. You can tell that he does not like asking for help. We seek brave souls that are willing to go to Katang, the ruined capital, and investigate what caused the devastation. We understand that this is not your problem to deal with, but if you were able to successfully help us regain our homeland, and uncover the truth of the destruction, we would make certain that you were duly rewarded. The princess gives her father an elbow, who will roll his eyes and add, if you please. Wow. <laughs> oh, we did have a big impact her well. on her. <laughs> this her causes well. Princess Vistada to smile brightly. <laughs> the pair will rise, and he will give a halted bow to you before leaving. The oh. rewards are possible retirement in a foreign land, an estate, and a considerable amount of wealth that still is undiscovered in a ruined city. As he leaves, Famunda and Fauntleroy apprehensively enter the room. Uh oh. They will ask how it went. Hmm. There's a lot of shit going on. Yeah, we didn't realize how messed up the world is. <laughs> yeah. It is a big world. Yeah. Flamunda will understand that the party has earned opportunities presented and will again tell them, you are always going to be welcome in Cacophony. If you choose to leave. He will point out that the city has an ambitious growth plan that is coming to fruition, that will increase the size of the city dramatically, which may include numerous opportunities for you to shine if you opt to stay. He will explain that he is not going to try and dissuade you from leaving, and will emphasize that he hates to see you go if that is your choice. His pitch is neutrally based, but the party should understand that he considers them an asset to the city and does not want to lose you. The rewards he offers are better accommodations, a sense of belonging, and the potential for new encounters in a familiar setting. He will point out 
that whether you stay or go, Cacophony will always consider you their son and daughters. Aww. <laughs> Fruity. Fruity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that being said, Famunda and Fauntleroy leave the room and close the door behind them, reminding you that the envoys leave at first light. Oh, man, and, we can't even sleep in. And they will be expected <laughs> to have an answer probably tonight. So, uh, I will repeat any part of this section that you guys want. Uh, the challenges and rewards are vast for a reason. Uh, I am not going to push you out of cacophony. I am merely presenting you with options around the continent that may or may not intrigue you. If you want to go to section A and another person wants to go to section B, so be it. You do not oh. have to make an answer altogether. You may each individually choose. As each of these envoys understands that getting one of you is a coup, getting all three of you would be a major accomplishment. So, hmm. boys and girls, there you have it. The future of your adventures, whether they be together or apart, are now in your hands. As a clingy tiefling, I'm like, together? I don't want to <laughs> split up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. It's fine. I, I, I yeah, don't we're care. We're in this together. I mean, Girl, so let, let me make I'm one like, thing oh. clear. I, I don't care. I have not made any arrangements for any of this. I have, I am merely presenting to you. Right. These are your options. So you got, I'm going to shut my mouth and you guys talk. It's are very important like, right here. It's like go, ahead and, guys, go ahead and ponder it. I'm just going to sit gonna here be, and shut up. R.I.P.D. <laughs> A holiday. It's like we pack our suitcases <laughs> with those tacky, like, you know, printed Hawaiian print shirts. We're like, yes, let's do this. Let's go somewhere. Vacation. Okay, so the three that appeal to me are the abominable snowman, mm -hmm. the <gasps> Russian hill dwarves, and okay. then the princess and her dad. Okay. Anybody else? Princess sucks, but because we're going there because of her and her dad, we probably would get some weird like priorities in some way. Well, we could so pick on him too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a plus. Uh there you know, but there's like I mean, unknown riches or whatever, uh, in the ruins, you know. Let let me let me seriously just break in. Camille says uh Berserkers, Toman and Katang. Uh, Zadar, what are your three top ones, if you know? Uh, and, and if you don't have three, that's fine, too. Uh, Hymona, that's the one with the woman that really, Nova. that really liked me. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, Katang, obviously, because of the prince de, Princess Vesti. Uh, yeah, uh, whatever her name is. Vestata. Vestata, that's it. And uh, i trying to think what would be the other one. Uh, I need like a list. I hate to be annoying like that, but no, I no, no. Like... That's that, no. I, I've given okay. you guys a lot to think of. Uh, the the other is the palace, the the portable palace. That's the uh, Talosians, the Tower Talosians. of the Curd. Okay, no. I'm with so, you on the Talosians. I do like them. Mm -hmm. Okay. But besides that, I don't think I can make like really other choices. Okay. What's the warmest place? Uh, the desert, the Katang. Hmm. Is you know, mm -hmm. the cold spot would be the uh, abominable snowman. Yeah, the hot yeah. spot would be the Katang. What's right below them? The Katang? Mm -hmm. uh, grasslands, but uh, those representatives are not here. Um, yeah. All uh, right, so I guess second is Katang. And then. Is there anything in a forest? Uh, here. I'm going gonna, to I'm gonna pop this up for you guys to look around. All so right. uh, 
here is the continental map for you guys. So you guys are here in beloved cacophony. Uh, you have uh, Zadar's lover. <laughs> <laughs> you have the Kurds here. Uh, this is the Katang. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the old empire Sensia. And your Russian hill dwarves are right there. You'll notice that's that the, the cold grand, place. The cold place is Frankula. Frankula. Where is that? You also notice the Grand Academy is here. Oh, just, just hop, skip, and jump away. Shouting yeah, that say, one out. Here's me being neurotic as I am in real life. The first place to go to would probably be the Taman because it's like literally right there. If not any of these other like front ones. Well, you guys are you guys are over here right now in the eastern basin. Where? Oh, we're way down there. That's mm -hmm. where Cacophony is, and then Hymona, the other coastal city state, is here. So you would have so to go happening? around to the Tomans. The closest oh, one so from far. you guys is Telosia. We can't get to the Heplock. Whatever. You are no. part of the Heplock. You are we part are. of the, the oh, okay. Heplock Peninsula. Uh, Telosia, you would go over land. Uh, any of the others about, would go uh, over sea. Wait, what's but like Telosia? Marokia? Telosia is the Tower of the Kurd. That is the people that you rescued from the bottom of the oh, ocean, okay. the palace. Mm -hmm. Right. And these other places like Lushwal, Kiev, uh, Andorra, Osmi, uh, those people are not part of the trade conference. They were not here. Yes. So if we went to Marokia, would we be able to potentially meet those people below then? You you can meet the Mar uh, Marco uh, Marchio Mar Maroki. Sorry, okay. those are I those are Elven descent people. Oh, they they are me. not Sensia. <laughs> Hannah those looked up when I said they'd hate me. She's like, why? Uh, if you watch the campaign. Uh, Marokia is where Ernie and uh, Carol are from. Oh, okay, gotcha. And Andura is where from uh, Kyle and Chris are from. Okay, right. but we're earlier than them. Yeah, we're you are not on the same timeline, right? Yeah. yeah, maybe yeah. you can go find their parents and kill them before they're born. Ooh. I was That's saying it. it'd be kind of. <laughs> interesting if we went there then like later in their storyline like whatever bullshit we did they're like and you remember when these people came and did this Daphne their storyline is done <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah it's done it's over <laughs> now you could go find Ernie's parents and kill them <laughs> yeah because they're supposedly dead <laughs> yeah. yeah well that's true but, yeah but no th th like those are your choices uh, I'm going to shut up again uh, unless you ask me questions so it's in your purview. Okay. And if you guys want to think about it, I will send you this uh, document and you guys can mull it over and you can give me the decision next Thursday and we'll just end the show a little early if you want. You are in no rush, no obligation, uh, but they will need an answer tonight. Not, um, not in real life, but before they leave. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But yeah, we're at 9.45. We can do final thoughts and you guys can email each other on what your thoughts are if you want to do that. Yeah. It's up to you. Yeah, like I really would like to like travel through the areas in a <coughs> most uh, efficient manner, like how I drive. If I don't have to go down this one street, I don't. If it's just more direct. If, if you accept any offer... Mm -hmm. you will go by land to Telosia. You will go by ship with any of the guys. others. If you do not want to go with any of these, but want to go somewhere on the map, you may do so. But right now, you have Utah? job opportunities. Utha. No, it's, Utah. <laughs> it's not it's Utah. Utah. It's Utah. <laughs> Your dyslexia is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, if you wanted to go to uh, Glaria, Nucha, or Utha, you may. Uh, you guys, 
are six level. You can do whatever you want. Or free agents. I, you're free yeah. agents. I have provided job opportunities. You may even stay in Cacophony because I still have a few ideas for Cacophony. But the world is your oyster. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. That's why I'm in Arizona. Um, I mean, I will back whatever play you guys are most inclined to. So I'm just, I just need like literally a list of like this is sure. the place, this is the offer, and then sure. the map because I just need to visually see everything. That is not a problem. That is what we right. will do. So, folks at home, you do not get an answer tonight. <laughs> uh, Sorry, folks. Oh, I know. Everyone's got bated breath. I I will go ahead and give you their answer on Twitter when I can. Let's go ahead. Uh, we've done a couple of things tonight. Let's do final thoughts. We'll start with Daphne. Daphne, what did you think? It's fun being part of a game show. So I ran Tomb of Annihilation, and the only time I've ever had a game show type of aspect was in that when you were betting on the dinosaurs racing. So it's kind of nice to have that instead of fighting in your role-playing games, you can have like some type of games, sports competitions, or gambling even, really. And it's nice to have that tossed in. So I appreciate it. Not a problem. Uh, what'd you think of your job opportunities, albeit confusing? It's a lot to take in, but it's nice instead of uh, you're on a quest and you have to go here, you're basically laid out with different options instead of being like, X, Y, Z, if you want to get your reward, you got to travel to this place. It's like, you pick it, like in real life, mm -hmm. which is nice, well, but stressful. The, yeah, and the thing is, if you accept a job opportunity, that doesn't mean you're stuck there. Yeah. Uh, that just means that you're taking the job opportunity. I can say, fuck you, Khalif, you're an asshole, we're out. Yeah, you yeah, could. true, although, exactly. Although, although he might Mommy, dad through. will take me back anyway. <laughs> he might behead me. <laughs> I mean, you know, if the uh, skin flute show done by Zadar might not have impressed him like uh, it did some of the others. So yeah, <laughs> you got that to think of. Right. Uh, David, what'd you think? Uh, I enjoyed it. I'm with uh, Caitlin on this with uh, enjoying the, the games uh, within the show. That's, mm -hmm. that's always a lot of fun. I do that in... Uh, uh, two two of the main games that i run and um yeah it's it's always a blast puzzles are always fun too so so this was a pretty fun episode oh God, I'm it, glad you got... even with the banana dance <laughs> you know, like... i don't know why i came up with that it's just like okay we're going for it you know at least you weren't burned as a witch what were yeah. you gonna say caitlin i say it's stressful but not as stressful in other ways like it's whatever there's been a topic of like having your characters killed by the dm and like sometimes you get so attached to your character at least when you're doing stuff like this you're not necessarily gonna die so you don't have that like extra stress of like oh, my health <laughs> no, only uh falling on the marbles or getting run over by the dragon Quite. wagon uh, that one had, that one had... that one <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, the, the berserkers literally i rolled three nat ones in a row they got <laughs> fucked over i had four <laughs> dice in my hand and they rolled three nat ones and then an 18 uh so i decided fuck it claude carries it up the, the yeah, final yeah. leg he picks uh, it up yeah. and runs. <laughs> yeah. that's right carrie what'd you think it was fun i like the lightheartedness and i like the opportunity to direct where we're gonna go next so yeah yeah it, it is all about player choice, not about DM demands. So yeah. uh, each one of you have what I've entitled an exit interview, which just mm -hmm. goes over the rehash of what I just <laughs> did. And I also gave you the map. Uh, so you guys email each other, talk mm -hmm. it over. When you guys have come to a conclusion, uh, let me know. I will let our viewers know. And then we will go from there. You are under no obligation to leave Cacophony. Uh, they want you just as much as everybody else does. Uh, but you got your options, so it's up to you guys. Uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and end it early. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. Uh, if you want to shoot the shit with D&D, &D, uh, hit us up on our Discord channel if you want to buy our cool stuff. 
Christmas is a coming. Uh, we've got that link. Uh, we are also transposing uh, our shows to audio as well. Tinyurl.com mobo inc audio. Uh, so that way, if you're just driving around, you can listen to us. You don't have to look at my face. Or Kyle's butt. Yeah. Gotta make sound effects like, oh, oh <laughs> nice. Hi. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Viewership just went up. Uh, <laughs> thanks to Pirate Dog Dice for making dice that don't suck. And uh, don't forget oddfishgames.com. Uh, they've got out our RPG with your cat this Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take a look at our Twitter account uh, and you will find the link to sign up. It's totally free, but you do want to sign up. That way you get a seat. For all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., please join us on Saturday when Kyle does a Christmas themed one shot. And it's going to run for three hours. Six level. <laughs> uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll see how he does. Uh, <laughs> it, it is a Grinch episode. Uh, and the PCs are. Not who you'd think they'd be. So enjoy. For all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thank you very much. We hope to see you on Saturday. Producer slash Camille slash Carrie, take us out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.